Hello, hello, my name is Callista, and welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. In the last episode, we were faced with a dilemma. We have to deal with Connor. He's causing havoc in Redcliffe and for the village. He's raising undead. He possessed Tegan for a little while, and something must be done about him if we are to get to our Lehman. We have two choices. We can either kill him outright, or we could go to the circle and do what Morrigan suggested, come back with a load of lyrium, a load of mages, and face the demon down in the Fade. And Artin has been thinking. She is very tempted by killing Connor. It is the quickest solution. He's literally right upstairs, and it's, it's also the easiest. However, as much as she is very, very tempted to do that, I think Artin's thoughts turn to Alistair a little bit. He has made it very clear that he cares about Arleman. He cares about what happens to his family. Even though Isolde treated him terribly when he was a little boy, he does seem to care about what happens to Connor. And killing Connor would make Alistair very upset. And oddly enough, I think Artin does care about that. She's, up until now, she's kind of been very annoyed with Alistair. He's been making these jokes. He hasn't been taking things seriously. She's been very frustrated with him. However, if you recall on their way into Redcliffe, he shared some very personal information with her. He put a great deal of trust into her by telling her something that he doesn't really tell people, which is that he's King Marek's bastard son. And not only did he trust her with that information, but also he mentioned that he has no interest in the throne. Yes, he is the bastard son of the, you know, the, the king who saved all of Ferelden. Alistair doesn't have any interest in that, though. And that is a connection that Artin... One, she never thought she'd feel that with anyone, but the fact that she's kind of feeling that similarity with Alistair, I do think it is kind of preying on her thoughts a little bit. Rather than just thinking, let's go for the most expedient solution, kill the boy, she's kind of thinking, mmm. But. But Alistair. So. She is going to have to make a very quick trip to the Circle of Major, and I do think we need to tell Isolde this before we just go. My son awaits your decision. Make it quickly. Forget the ritual, we fight the demon here. There must be another way to enter the Fade. Give me some time. I don't understand, because Morrigan's already said about going to the Circle, I don't understand why we aren't just saying, yeah, let's go to the Circle, but we'll, we'll play along. There must be another way to enter the Fade. You can find Lyrium and more mages at the Circle of Magi, if they would even do it. The Circle Tower is not too far from here and they owe me. No, that will take too much time. Yeah, the, the Circle do owe us a favour. The Circle Tower is not far from here and they owe me. Indeed. It should not be difficult to get what is needed, provided we have the time. But what will happen here? Connor will not remain passive forever. I'll take that chance, perhaps not then. Again, I... She is very tempted by just killing Connor. But that would create a lot of friction with Alistair. Alistair, I think... She, I think Artin's kind of thinking that maybe she doesn't give Alistair the kind of... Not the respect, but I don't think she kind of mentally gives him the time he deserves. He is the only other... Grey Warden in Ferelden, and he is her comrade. He has placed a great deal in trust, a great deal of trust in her, and it's only right that we return that trust. I will take that chance. Go to the tower quickly, then. The longer you are away, the greater the chances of disaster. Hopefully, the um, the castle still has some horses or or something It'll along those done. lines that they'd be willing to let us borrow. Yes. And now then, before we do 
head to the circle. I want to go and have a chat with Connor. Yep. I I knew it. <laughs> Take him out. Speak. Kick him. Everyone's doing all right for. Oh, oh, the the knights have come to help. Thank you. Oh wow, suits of armor can be stunned. I didn't know that. How are the knights doing? The knights are doing fine. Ooh, if you could possibly do a group heal, that'd be great. Did I set my timer going? Yes, I did. Hurry. Uh, Alistair, could you take a potion? Thank you. Kick him. There we go. Uh, that. Oh, God. I'm going to say, Alistair, you go over here. Artin, you go fight this one, because they'll follow us. Alistair, yep. And, oh, thank you, Wynn. There we go. And now it's just these two left. Alistair, if you could take another potion. And one last guy. Let's stun him. There we go, thank you, gentlemen. Okay. They didn't drop anything. What's through here? Oh! Oh, the Chamberlain! The Chamberlain's been hanging around with the corpses. Oh! What was going on in this room? Go down. Let's, let's see if you can get a better angle on this. Uh, Artie, why don't you go after this guy? Nice. Some more corpse gold. How many corpse goals do we have? 15. Okay. Lovely. Oh, and the Chamberlain drop stuff. Redcliffe Vault Key. This key is so heavy it could be used as a bludgeon. They don't make them like they used to. Okay. Uh, ooh, jewelry. Lovely. That'll uh that'll be for Morrigan. Vanity, uh, we don't need that, but it can be sold. Ooh, nice, Alistair. Let's see. Geography of Ferelden. The kingdom of Ferelden is the southernmost civilized nation in Thedas, although some scholars dispute that claim to civilization. It is perhaps the most physically isolated of all the kingdoms of Thedas. To the east is the Amaranthine Ocean. To the north, the Waking Sea, and to the south, the Kakari Wilds, which in the summer months are a vast peat bog, and in the winter become a treacherous labyrinth of iced over waterways. The Frostback Mountains guard the western border, and only a narrow plain between the mountains and the sea allow travel between Ferelden and Orlay. Most of the land in the central portion of the kingdom, called the Banorn, is open plains. These are crossed by the remnants of an ancient Tavinta highway that once connected Val Royo with Ostagar on the edge of the Kakari Wilds. The western part of Ferelden is dominated by Lake Kalanhad, a huge caldera filled by the runoff of glaciers from nearby mountains. Lake Kalanhad is home to the famed fortress of Redcliffe, as well as the Circle Tower, which houses Ferelden's Circle of Magi. In the east is the vast Brazilian forest, which the superstitious locals profess to be haunted, and from which rises the Dragon's Peak, a solitary mountain which guards the capital city of Denerim. From In Pursuit of Knowledge, The Travels of a Chantry Scholar, by Brother Gen TV. We haven't got any other... We do! Conoguerin. I feel like I'm sleeping, but I guess I'm not. 
While most of the fans and Isles of Ferelden cart their children with them to the Landsmeet in the interest of eventually marrying them off, Connor has spent his entire life at Redcliffe, and it's hardly surprising given the Oh, excuse me, and it's hardly surprising the child possessed the gift of magic. By law, he should have been taken to the Circle of Magi at first sight, abdicating his claim to Redcliffe. Instead, the boy was kept out of public view and his magic hushed up, with disastrous results. All mages are beacons that attract the attention of fate spirits. Because of this, they are trained and tested by the Circle to ensure they can withstand attacks from, the male from malevolent fade creatures that seek entry into the waking world. Untrained, Connor drew the attention of a powerful demon that tore the veil asunder. Yeah, mages, uh, mages abdicate all right to their um, claims, as Very do well. uh, half-elves. Admittedly, no one can tell who is elven-blooded by sight, given that, you know, half-elves look just as human as Morrigan, Wynn, or Alistair. And then Alistair, you have a level. Let's go two constitution, one strength. And... Hmm. You know what? Cleanse area. It's always a good one. And this would appear to be the Arl's study. As you say. Alistair's mother's amulet. This silver emblem, emblem of Andraste's flame is riddled with cracks. Someone with a lot of patience has carefully glued it back together. And the book? The Orlesian Empire. Not surprising that Eamon is married to an Orlesian. There are many lords and ladies in Valroyo. And I mean this literally. Once, the system of noble titles in, in Orlais was labyrinthine. There were barons and baron... There were barons, barons, and baronets, and sir barons and a horde of others, each with its own origins and its own nuances of comparison. The Orlesian aristocracy is ancient, and much given to competition. All the nobility play the grand game, as it is known, whether they wish to or not. It is a game of reputation and patronage, where moves are made with rumours and scandal is the chief weapon. No gentle game, this. More blood has been drawn as a result of the grand game than any war the Orlesians have fought. Of this, I am assured by almost every gentleman here. As far as titles went, everything changed with the coming of Emperor Draken, who established the Orlesian Empire as it exists now and who created the Chantry. There is no more venerated figure in Orlais. In Valroyo, the statue of Draken stands as tall as the statue of Andraste. Draken determined that the grand game was tearing Orlais apart. So he abolished all titles beside his own and Lord and Lady. I am told with some twittering amusement that this action did not end the grand game as Draken had intended. And now, the lords and ladies collected unofficial titles rather than official ones, such as the exalted patron of Tassus Clay, or uncle to the champion of Trems. It is a headache to remember such title, and one winces to think of the poor doormen at the balls who must rattle them off as each guest enters the room. The aristocracy is different from Ferelden in other ways as well. The Orlesians' right to rule stems directly from the Maker, there exists neither the concept of rule by merit, nor the slightest notion of rebellion. If one is not noble, or aspires to be, or at least aspires to be in the good graces of a noble, and is ever watching for a way to enter the patronage of those better placed in the grand game. And then there are the masks. And the cosmetics, I have not seen so much paint since the kennels at High Ever. But that is another story. From Beyond the Frostbacks by Banturic of West Hill, 920 Dragon. Hmm. Very interesting. Now then, I believe Connor is up here. They did, they did say he was uh, probably in the family quarters. Oh, more undead. Let's, let's just have a little bit of a rummage. See what they've got in here. 
Thank you. As you say. Ooh, the Guerins of Ferelden, a genealogical... Oh, a genealogical history. The Guerins of Ferelden, a genealogical history. This book traces the line of Al Eamon back to the time of the Alamari clans. It doesn't seem to have been read much. Okay. Just for show, then. So there's no harm in us. Oh, hello, sleepyheads. Stab him. And sweet. Uh, now you. Oh, Morgan's fighting one, but she, uh, she seems to be doing all right. There we go. Oh, Morrigan's also leveled. Come on, keep on it with those backstabs. Nice. Oop. And one left. There we go. As you say. Thank you. Of course. And I believe there's a room back here. Very well. Yes. Ooh. This is a this is a lot more expansive than I thought it was. Kick him. There you go. Nice. As you say. Hmm. Nothing in here aside from a chest. Don't mind if I do. Thank you. And another book. Journal of the Tranquil. Some laugh at me. I no longer mind. Once upon a time, I studied as they did. I learned under the tutelage of an enchanter and attempted to master the art of bending magic to my will. And while I did well enough, I know that I struggled. I saw the way the enchanter looked at me the sidelong glances of worry and disappointment. While other apprentices were conjuring fire, I could barely light a candle. I was frightened of magic. When I was a boy, my grandmother regaled me with tales of the terrible Flemeth, the Witch of the Wilds. She told me of, ma of the Magisters and how their evil magic infected the world with the Darkspawn. She told me of demons and how they were drawn to the dreams of those who possessed magic like moths to a flame. She told me all these things because, she said, the talent ran in our family's blood. And so it ran in mine. All my young life I had dreaded the thought. I prayed to the Maker that I was not so cursed. But I knew otherwise. Deep in my heart, I knew. When the Templars came to our home, I knew. The Mage's Tower was terrifying, full of secrets and danger. The Templars glared at me as if I could spring full into an abomination before their very eyes. My enchanter patiently attempted to teach me to marshal my willpower, my only defence should a demon attempt to enslave me, but it was no use. How many nights did I cry myself to sleep in that dark and lonely place? Then my harrowing came at last, my final te test. Face a demon, they said, or submit to the right of tranquillity. They would sever my connection to the Fade, and thus I would never dream, and no demon could ever touch me. But I would also be unable to do magic, and I would never feel an emotion ever again. Facing the demon was certain death, so my choice was easy. It was not so painful. Now I serve in other ways. We Tranquil manage the archives. We run the tower, purchase the supplies, and maintain the accounts. Our condition also allows us to use the magical element delirium without ill effect, and thus we are the ones who enchant the magical items. We are the merchants who sell these items to those, with cir to those the circle permits, and the coin from those sales provides the circle's wealth. Thus, we tranquil are vital. The young and old may stare at me, ill at ease, but they would be worse off without me. They may think me a failure, failure. But there is no horror for me now. I feel no fear of what I am. The shadows are merely shadows. 
and I am content. Edin the Meek, Tranquil of the Circle of Magi of Starkhaven, the Free Marchers. Very interesting. I, I do like hearing from the Tranquil. I think they're very interesting. Another corpse gall. Thank you. We have this chest. As you say. Ooh, stone dragon statuette. A small stone carving of a dragon. Lovely. Now then, we came through this door. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh my god. I don't know why that scared me so much. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, be calm. Be calm. Okay. I, I, I don't know why that startled me. That, that properly threw me off. Let's, let's make them come to us. Okay. And sweet. Ooh. Okay. Take this one out. Who next? You. Get stung. Oh, okay. Go on. Nice. Good, sweet. Now for you. And last one. Okay. Fantastic. And another corpse call. Oh, uh, one more. Yes. Thank you for the quartz. This is the vault. It will be done. And we use the key. On, on one hand, I feel a little bit bad for... Ooh, uh, silver frame still life. This painting is framed in silver and depicts 32 identical Orlesian porcelain terrines. I, uh, I feel a little bit bad for um, basically taking all of this, you know, robbing the castle in their hour of need, but you know, we are fighting well. a blight. We do need this. Ooh, the fox's bow. Very interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, Connor is round this way. Oh, before I go anywhere, Morrigan. Two magic, one willpower. And, hmm. You know what? I want to see da, 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 skills. Wynne has won in herbalism. Okay, so at some point we are going to need to get up to ex, uh, master herbalism. I'm thinking... The sooner I start on this, the better. And... <laughs> oh, weakness. I, I do love me mass paralysis. And Alistair? How is this? Ooh, that's, that is much better. Fantastic. Oh, and you can also take the Templar armor. Don't mind if I do. Uh, any of these any better? Those are. And we can't equip the uh, the heavy plate boots, unfortunately. And it doesn't seem like we have anything better. Yeah, okay. That's good. Yep. Hey, Connor. Thank you for the save. So a quick word of warning. Eamon is through there. If you try and enter Eamon's room, Connor won't be happy. I don't know how Connor reacts to trying to enter his bedroom. I'm I'm not gonna risk it. Go away. She won't like you being here. She'll just try to hurt you. Who are you talking about? Is this Connor the real Connor? I'm not afraid of being hurt. 
this is obviously the real Connor. He doesn't sound like he did when he was talking with Isolde back in the other uh, main hall. Who are you talking about? The scary lady who speaks to me in my dreams. She's quiet now, but she's never very far. Oh, the poor lad. I tried to stop her, but I can't. She said she'd help father. I didn't think she'd hurt everyone. Honestly, I didn't. Do you know what she is, Connor? I need to help your father. I'm not here to coddle you. We aren't here to coddle him, but this is clearly a very disturbed child and we should be treating him... gently. Do you know where she is, Connor? She's a bad person. I heard her in my dreams. And then she was everywhere. I'm afraid this has to end now. She's not a person, she's a demon. I need to help your father, I'm not here to coddle you. I want to stop her, but I don't want to hurt you. She's not a person, she's a demon. Sometimes she's nice. She says she just wants to help me. But then she gets very mean. Demons are liars. That's a very interesting question. Does she have a name? She won't tell me. She says names have power. Clever. I need to help your father. She said that was why you were here. I want to help father too. She knew I did. That's why she came to me. Yeah, um... So Isolde still believes that Jowen summoned the demon. Yeah, no, I don't think... I only think Jowen's crime was poisoning the Isle. I don't think he had anything to do with this. I think this was all on Connor. And it isn't really his fault. As I said, he's he's a young boy. He's being taught by Jowen, who's a complete dipshit. If, if he were in the circle and they were telling him there are going to be people, people in quotation marks, who, who talk to you in your dreams and promise you things, but you have to say no to them because it'll never end well. Jowen wasn't going to teach him that, obviously. Jowen, Jowen is useless. Oh, oh, buddy. I want to stop her, but I don't want to hurt you. But somebody has to stop her from hurting anyone else. Well, it's not going to be me. I'm here for the Arl, nothing else. There is another way. Yeah, I think I think the reason why Artin wanted to tell Connor that she's kind of telling Connor this in the hopes that if he knows that help is on the way, then he can kind of strengthen his resolve a little bit and maybe fight off the, this demon for a little bit longer, just until we are able to get some help back. There is another way. I don't know how much longer she'll be gone for, but she's always watching. She won't let you near father. She'll just come back again, and then... Just tell everyone to stay away, especially mother. I don't want her to see me like this. I'm going to help you, Connor, I promise. Then I suppose, suppose I have no choice. Just wait here, I'll be back. Yeah, we're, we're telling him to wait. We, I, I, I don't exactly want to promise to help him because the circle might say no. But we just hold on, Connor. Help is on the way, hopefully. Just be strong. Just wait here. I'll be back. She won't let me go anywhere. Anyway. Okay, kiddo. Yep, don't, don't go through that, do that door. Go through this door. Back down the stairs. Okay, yeah, let's let's head straight out. We searched through all of these rooms. I'm very glad that we did get to chat to Connor. And we are gonna head straight to the circle. This way. And hopefully they will be able to help us. Okay, down here, through the big gates. Of course. I do hope that Jowen made it out all right. His, as I said, I, I do feel badly for him. He did think he was doing the right thing because Ten Loghain told him to do it. So, 
Uh, he, also, Jawa never had much sense of his own. Let's head straight to the castle tower. Oh, hello. Oh, I remember what this is. Oh, thank the maker. We need help. They attacked the wagon. Please help us. Follow me. I'll take you to them. Mm hmm. Yes. Yeah, you'll uh, you'll take us to them. Oh look, the crows are hopping about. First things first, we want to get after... Oh god, where... There she is. Everyone... After her. We'll need to fight, sorry. Because she is a mage. Oh no. Nice. Good job. Now everyone on... Everyone on Zebra. Oh. And oh no, I've been marked. But I reckon I'll be okay. Okay, Alistair, you go after this guy. I'm gonna help us out with the traps. Alistair, you are Alistair. Please go and fight that guy. Thank you, everyone. Hold positions because I remember all of the traps. So many traps, jeez. But so much a very nice XP. Uh, can we? It is some... Yep, there's one up here. What kind of trap? and I believe there are more around this way I think what is that? yep oh, very well and is everyone no we've still got one assassin over there one assassin up here it is something else yep what kind of trap Oh, oh, there we go. There is my timer. Okay, so we're, we're just going to finish off this encounter. We might as well. Um, is that everything? Yeah, I think so. Everyone, ever, everyone can move freely. You are my hand. Uh, oh. Very nice. The elven assassin is wounded and unconscious, but alive. You could tie him up and talk to him if you wished. Wake him up to talk to him or kill him now. Let's let's wake him up. Mm. Oh, what? I Oh. Oh, I rather thought I would wake up dead or not wake up at all, as the case may be. But I see you haven't killed me yet. I have some questions. That could be easily rectified. I decided I wanted to torture you first. Quiet, you'll answer when spoken to. I have some questions. Ah, so I am to be interrogated. Let me save you some time. My name is Zevran. Zev to my friends. I am a member of the Antivan Crows, brought here for the sole purpose of slaying any surviving Grey Wardens, which I have failed at, sadly. I'm rather happy you failed. What are the Antiven Crows? Who hired you to kill us? Why are you telling me all this? Alright, I'm done with the questions. Um, I don't know that Artin would be very familiar with this guy. but So I, I think one is out. Like I, She's not doing this to kind of banter with him. She, she wants to get straight to the point. 
would she know what the Antiven Crows are? I doubt they get they ever really go into Ozma, so she she might not know what the Antiven Crows are. What are the Antiven Crows? This elf is a crow. That makes sense. They are an order of assassins out of Antiva. I understand they almost run that nation, and are hired only at great expense. Quite right. I'm surprised you haven't heard much of the crows out here. Back where I come from, we're rather infamous. Not for being good assassins, I see. You came all the way from Antiva. Who hired you to kill us? Why are you telling me all this? Hmm. You came all the way from Antiva? Not precisely. I was in the neighborhood when the offer came. The crows get around, you see. Who hired you to kill us? A rather taciturn fellow in the capital. Logan, I think his name was. Yes, that's it. Does that mean you're loyal to Logan? When were you to see him next? How much were you paid? Why are you telling me all of this? Hmm. He's he's an assassin. He's he's loyal to wherever his money's coming from. He's he, it doesn't necessarily mean that he's loyal to Loghain, and I think Artin would know that. When were you to see him next? I wasn't. If I had succeeded, I would have returned home and the Crows would have informed your Loghain of the results, if he didn't already know. If I had failed, I would be dead, or I should be, at least, as far as the Crows are concerned. No need to see Loghain, then. If you had failed? Hmm... Yeah, yeah, he's a uh, if. If you had failed? What can I say, huh? I am an eternal optimist. Although the chances of succeeding at this point seem a bit slim, don't they? <laughs> no. no, I don't suppose you'd find that funny, would you? Hmm. Not number one. He's he's an assassin. He's contracted out. So I doubt he's loyal. Also also he's from Antiva. So why would you be loyal to someone else's regent? Hmm. I mean I I Alton might be curious about how much he was paid. Like how how much does uh, Loghain value? The, uh, the, the, da, 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 da. How much does Logan value um, Artin and Alistair's heads on platters? How much were you paid? I wasn't paid anything. The crows, however, were paid quite handsomely, or so I understand. Which does make me about as poor as a chantry mouse, come to think of it. Being an Antivan crow isn't for the ambitious, to be perfectly honest. Then why are you one? Um... That, that is a good question. Artin doesn't know anything about how the crows recruit. Then why are you one? Well, aside from a distinct lack of ambition, I suppose it's because I wasn't given much of a choice. The crows bought me young. I was a bargain too, or so I'm led to believe. But don't let my sad story influence you. The crows aren't so bad. They keep one well supplied. Wine, women, men, whatever you happen to fancy. Though the whole severance package is garbage, let me tell you. If you're considering joining, I'd really think twice about it. Thanks, I'll take that under advisement. Hmm. Why are you telling me all this? <laughs> Why not? I wasn't paid for silence. Not that I offered it for sale, precisely. Aren't you at least loyal to your employers? Were you paid to talk my ear off then? There's no reason for me to believe anything you say. Aren't you at least loyal to your employers? Loyalty is an interesting concept. If you wish, and you're done interrogating me, we can discuss it further. I'm listening, make it quick. I'm not done questioning you yet. I'm not interested in anything you have to say. Yeah, we, we were pretty much done questioning him. I'm listening. Make it quick. Well, here's the thing. I failed to kill you, so my life is forfeit. That's how it works. If you don't kill me, the crows will. Thing is, I like living. And you obviously are the sort to give the crows pause. So let me serve you instead. 
Can I expect the same amount of loyalty from you and what's to finish you, stop you from finishing the job later? You must think I'm royally stupid. What do you want in return? Why would I want your surface? No, I refuse your offer. Yeah, he, he has betrayed his employers very quickly. Can I expect the same amount of loyalty from you? I happen to be a very loyal person. Up until the point where someone expects me to die for failing, that's not a fault, really, is it? I mean, unless you are the sort who would do the same thing, in which case I don't come very well recommended, I suppose. And what's to stop you from finishing the job later? To be completely honest, I was never given much of a choice regarding joining the Crows. They bought me on the slave market when I was a child. I think I paid my worth back to them plus tenfold. The only way out, however, is to sign up with someone they can't touch. Even if I did kill you now, they might just kill me on principle for failing the first time. Honestly, I'd rather take my chances with you. Hmm. Won't, yeah, won't they come after you? Possibly. I happen to know their wily ways, however. I can protect myself as well as you. Uh, not that you seem to need much help. And if not, well, it's not as if I had many alternatives to start with, is it? What do you want in return? Well, let's see. Being allowed to live would be nice, and would make me marginally more useful to you. And somewhere down the line, if you should decide that you no longer have need of me, then I go on my way. Until then, I am yours. Is that fair? Hmm. Let's see. He is an assassin. And by all accounts, he must be a good assassin if he was chosen to be sent to the regent to take out the, the Grey Wardens. He, he must be a decent enough assassin. Huh. <sighs> And we don't have many party members. Like, expanding the team is always useful. He's not loyal. Which... Not great, but... He could also warn us of any traps by the crows at a later date. Because we do still... They failed, but... Loghain still has this bounty out on us. So, Zevran can, you know, help us identify crow traps. So we we do want him on our side. I think this is a case of keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Very well. I accept your offer. What? You're taking the assassin with us now? Does that really seem like a good idea? If you want to kill him, Alistair, then you do it. Persuade. Don't worry about it. We could use him. We're taking him because I say so. End of story. You're here, aren't you? Collecting cast-offs is what I do. Oh, no, we're, we're going to go for the persuade. Don't worry about it. We could use him. Hmm. All right. All right. I see your point. Still, if there was a sign we were desperate, I think it just knocked on the door and said hello. A fine plan. But I would examine your food and drink far more closely from now on, were I you. That's excellent advice for anyone. I hereby pledge my oath of loyalty to you until such a time as you choose to release me from it. I am your man, without reservation. This I swear. I kind of feel like that oath is completely meaningless, but we're just gonna go with our current team. Yeah, I- oh. Ooh, are we fighting the crow? I'm, I'm guessing not. Um, yeah, to be perfectly honest, I don't feel like- Zevran's word has much, if any, weight to it. Okay, new codex. Where'd it go? Friends of Red Jenny, the task was never promised to be easy. You said you could enter the Circle Tower and you were believed. Find the small painted box in First Enchanter Irving's office and deliver it to the door marked in Denerim as agreed. Or be prepared to find yourself hunted across Ferelden. Friends of Red Jenny. There is a sketched map of several doors. It requires the box to be placed on it to block out false leads. Okay, well, we do actually have that box. So if we uh, we ever head down to Denerim, well, we will have to head to Denerim at some point. 
Not anytime soon, but when, when we do get down there, we must remember about that box. Uh, Very thank well. Thank you. Did these guys drop anything? They did, lovely. And I'm not sure if there's anything up there. Mm, no. Okay, well, I am over time as it is, so I'm going to leave off right here. In the next episode, we will be finishing our trip to the Circle Tower to get some help for Connor. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.